Welcome back to the Backyard Professor Chess Videos. It is cold outside today. Oh man. 14 degrees. Whew. Time to warm up. Hopefully my cotton picking pop won't drip all over me. It's been dripping all over me all morning. While I have been preparing this chess game commentary it is for the world chess championship of 1960 between the scientific player Mikhail Botvinnik who was just trouncing everyone he met and the other Mikhail Mikhail Tal who was out finessing everyone else he played. These two met and fireworks were created. Bob Vinnick is the white here. This took place in 1960. Tall is playing the black pieces and Bob Vinnick takes Tal to school and Tal decides to take Botvinnik back to school and these two went at it time and again. I believe this is the ninth, if I remember right, the ninth game in the match. And uh, this is just, this is pure Tal. It really is. And I'll be honest with you, it's pure Botvinnik. Uh, these two, wow. Great, great series of games. Phenomenal, phenomenal chess ability and knowledge. This is going to be a rather uh, important opening and an important game. I do believe it was the ninth game. And uh, against Tall, you've got to... You've got a castle. And now here comes Tall straight up the center. And here comes Botvinnik answering in the center. They want to make sure that they have control of the most important area of the board, which they do at this point. The reason he pushed the H3. I, and I know he's castled and he's already created some weaknesses, is he's trying to prevent this knight from coming to g4. Uh, yeah, this will be interesting to see how this works. This, the commentator, I believe it was in Ruben Fines where I got this, the world's greatest chess games. The commentator said that Tal loved this particular variation bringing his queen out on this side to give some interesting complications. And that he will do without question. Botvinnik, however, does gain some space in the center, which is really nice. Tal says, okay, let's exchange the pawn. And Botvinnik agrees, okay, let's exchange the pawn. So for the moment, Botvinnik will lock the center at this juncture, and Tal comes right into it. Now, Tal equalizes rather easy once Botvinnik closed the center because he was so astute. Botvinnik wanted to remain uh, ahead with the initiative, which is the reason why he closed the center, but Tal is much too strong for that kind of silly nonsense. Tal just simply equalizes very, very easily here, as we shall see here shortly. Bishop to d7. Knight to d3, knight will take, d3, Tal says, yes, I will do that exchange with you, that's not a problem, 
and then rook, rook f to c8. So, I mean, Cal equalizes. <laughs> it, it wasn't that big a deal for him. He just simply made a an exchange in the center and, and equalized the game. And now he's got a, uh, a great position, rook on an open file. Even in a central closed board, this is going to be a tough one. And there's nothing really at this point that Bob Bennett can do with his rooks. And so we're good. Now, another thing that's so nice about Tall is he'll play on this side, he'll play in the center, and then he'll play on this side. And here we go. We could be some, we could be seeing the beginning of some really interesting tall fireworks. We shall see. Tall is making inroads. Bot Vinick is carefully, circumspectly trying to stop things from happening too speedily. And here comes Tal. The Riga magician works his magic. He is in full throttle. And, wow. <laughs> so, this virtually forces Botmanic to present his rooks not in the optimum way. But against Tall, you have to get every piece in there. Yeah, so, uh, not on the optimal squares, but activate them anyway is kind of what the, the principle we're seeing here. Bob Vinick can not afford to fall too far behind in the strategic placement in the position or Tal is going to waltz all over him just like this. They both saw that Tal was going to dominate the C-file with the double up of the rooks, so... Okay, here we go. This is going to be a tough one, man. This is going to be a great game <laughs> because there's there's just so much. Uh, there is a lot of pent-up energy here. We're about to see some beauty here. And King comes to H2. And now again, Tal is pushing into... He... Uh, I love how the Grandmasters, the real, real, real good ones, which is virtually all of them, <laughs> really. I'm not even exaggerating. I love how they work on one side of the board. And then they move back to the center. And then they move back to the other side of the board. And then they move back to the center. I mean, they play the entire position. And that that is the beauty of their chess. I mean, <laughs> it's really something e will take the f and you're wondering well has he unnecessarily weakened his king side maybe maybe not we'll see this is the point that tal wanted though because now he uh for lack of a better description he uncoordinates Botvinnik's coordination. Now, when you can uncoordinate Botvinnik, you've got bragging rights. And that is what Tal does here. It's very rare to see Botvinnik's rooks outplayed. I'll put it that way. Uh, you, no one outplays Botvinnik and rooks. And yet here we're seeing Tal taking just complete control of the file as well as the coordination of the rooks. This, perhaps we will never really understand the, uh, the significance and the power here, but this game is electrifying when, when it's taken into account how absolutely fantastic Fantastic. Botvinnik played his rooks all the time, and now he's got this, and this just doesn't look like Botvinnik, and now, <laughs> Tal, ugh, lightning bolt, can you see it? <laughs> Probably not, because Tal loved to complicate stuff, right? 
Uh, we're all familiar with that now. But, I mean, he really loves to complicate stuff, right? What he liked to do is he liked to present puzzles to his opponents and say, okay, I'm going to make this so complex that neither one of us can calculate all the variations. So that's what's going to make this game fun is because I don't have anything calculated out fully any more than you're going to be able to, but you're going to have to calculate on your time clock, not mine. <laughs> Something to that effect, right? Well, watch this. Knight F4. Don't even pretend you claim you saw that coming unless your name is either Juzernim or Odoker or Merlin or some of the really, really classic powerhouses in the chess club because there's no way that move <laughs> makes any kind of sense and yet it makes all the sense. The design here is to throw Botvinnik off equilibrium. Now, he has begun to psychologically make inroads into Botvinnik's mind simply because of the rather weak placement of his rooks. But to add this to it, it is really deeply profound for Tao. <laughs> Not for Tal, I mean, but, but for Botvinnik. To throw that at Botvinnik is, he comes up to you and he says, Tsh, he backhands you, Tsh, slaps you in the face, and he says, Monsieur, do something about that, will you? I double dog dare you. Yeah. Tal really throws it in here. Okay, so we're having fun now. Now, this move, just to show you, got two exclamation points and a question mark. I'm, wow. Out of the blue. Yeah. And yet not out of the blue. It's so typical of Tal. And... Here is where Botvinnik goes wrong. Uh, he tripped him up. He did trip him up. He took it with the pawn. And he should have took it with the bishop. I believe this is where the, uh, the comment was made by fine. I didn't put it in my notes though, man. Yeah, yeah, he should have taken it with the bishop, rather than the pawn. And we'll see as the game progresses with the, with the complexity. And now, of course, blam, you got the b2 pawn. So the queen side is under attack, and uh, so is the king side, and uh, so is the center. <laughs> That's so typical of Kyle, right? Yeah, this is wow. So now, once again... But then it comes over here, and this is a spectacular move that puts the question of the game to Botvinnik. How are you going to respond here? You have a few options, Botvinnik. This is what Tao's saying. Tao came up to him with this move, and he goes, I slap you once on this side, and now I slap you once on this side, and I slap you. You, you, you must do something about this year. And there's nothing Botvinnik can do. Over the board with the time element, he can't calculate it all. And here's where Botvinnik went wrong. He really, really did need to not take the queen. That was the error. What he really, really needed to do is bishop takes the pawn. That's what he should have done. So let's take a look 
And of course, Tal is going to swap the queens with a very, very brutally deadly passed pawn and a very, very profoundly important C file that he is dominating at this point. Yeah. So this is complex. You notice how Tal's bishops and rooks coordinate so very, very much stronger than Botbenik's rooks with his bishops and knight. And you'll also notice that Tal is behind a piece, but his position is really good right now. I, I mean, wasn't it typical of Tal? I mean, he's probably the only player in all of history, probably besides Alakin, who could play a piece down and trounce you. And remember, he's playing the world champion, Mikhail Botvinnik, who was legendary for his absolutely over-the-top, outrageously gigantic amount of time in preparing for his matches. He didn't put a mere punk 14 hours a day of study into chess when he was getting ready for his matches. He went more like 22 hours a day. It was outrageous how well prepared Botvinnik was. Here we see Tal, a piece down, manhandling him. It's hard to give the significance <laughs> of the psychological blow that Tal gave Botvinnik. This is for the World Championship. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, I'm off, I'm off. Rook to B3, and now, and now, uh, Rook to D4. Now here comes Tal. Notice again, all bases covered between his two bishops and his two rooks and his center and his open file, the C file. This is really a beautiful thing to see. So, uh, Botvinnik, you gotta stop that pawn, man. <laughs> you just, that's the way it is. It's not anybody's fault. You have to stop the pawn. Here come the coordination of the bishops into the center with the rooks on the files. Check to the king. Absolutely exquisite chess here by Tal. And now bishop to f4. He's slowly coming together in a coordinated fashion. Knight will take the pawn. Literally no choice. Nice fork on the bishop and uh, rook. He doesn't give a flying flip. He takes the rook here. <sighs> and you're going, whoa, wait a minute. You've got your rook and bishop forked. You're going to leave them alone and take the rook there? Yes. That's welcome to the world of Tal Chess, man. Phenomenal move here. Absolutely stunning how he played this through. So he lost his other rook, which is okay, because now he takes the bishop check. Wow. And the bishop comes to f1. He's slowly but surely starting to get power back. Now they're even with pieces. And there is not a lot Bob Bennett can do at this point. Here come the bishops again in a slow, steady, coordinated effort. Bob Bennett is going to try to do something profound. But Tal keeps his bishops right there in the hardcore center of the apple, man. This is so incredible how he does this. Bishop f4, now bishop f6, and the rook, oh, rook will take the pawn here, so he's going to try to 
he's he's going to try to go into an end game where it can be more even than not but i don't think he's going to make it and he cannot he cannot take the pawn just yet because of the threat of rook take the knight and when the bishop comes here the uh yeah, if he'd taken the pawn, then the bishop comes here and goes check, and he nabs himself a bishop, or a, or a rook. He goes rook up. So, Botvinnik did not make a mistake by leaving that pawn. He can't take it. Yeah, this is one of the... This is, again, there are so many... He was such a good tactician. There's so many tactics in every one of Tal's games that you just don't see lurking behind the scenes. And uh, in case you in case you ask, well, Botvinnik wasn't much of a chess player. He could have just taken the pawn. Oh no, he could not have. Not even happen. Not right now at this move. No. Nope, nope, nope. He did that correct. And now, of course, Tal takes the pawn. Notice how he's slowly taking control more and more, and now he can take. The pawn and bishop c4, a fantastic position for it. Rook a8, and the king will come to f7. Quit burgling the board, dude, and now rook a7, and the king will come to e6, centralizing its king, which can only help uh, Tal. Rook, and now here comes the d pawn. Now Tal has an option with the central passed pawn, which is really nice for him. But then it's going to try to give it his very, very best. H4 with the bishop check. King goes back over to G2. King will come to D6. The nice thing about uh, what Bot Bennett did is he virtually brought the king in so that he could escort the pawn right down into the kingdom. Yeah. Whoops. Knight g3, this is pure desperation. Tau will exchange. Absolutely. Bishop takes, and now the bishop will take the bishop like this, and then the pawn will take the bishop. So Tal is in good shape here. Even though it is a rook, king, pawn, end game, it's okay because Tal's in control. And then rook to a7, and now c3, and now rook c7. Rooks belong behind past pawns. This is true, but in this case, the king will be able to escort with the help of the rook already here, he's going to get his queen and win the game. Notice how he played a piece down for so long, and then he eventually caught back up because of the superiority of his position. Both of his bishops coordinated very, very good with his rooks. They also completely owned the center, while the rooks did their correct job of dominating the C file, which he did give up for later use. He left it white, didn't matter. Because once you use the file to get your objective, you can give it up. So that's Mikhail Tal for us. Fun stuff, fun chess. So in the meantime, remember, be good, do well, have fun, make friends, be happy, stay safe. Uh, leave the world just a little bit better place than when you found it when you woke up today. And if you are just now going to bed, have a good night, dream well, and we will see all of you, no matter where you are around the planet, in the next Backyard Professor Chess video.